Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Monday, August 15th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. Helps us out a ton. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Now, if you're looking for my MLB best bets, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Of course, I'm always running my $15 MLB best bet, and you can use the code AUG15, that's A-U-G-15, to save 15% at checkout. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Monday, August 15th. First up, we see a doubleheader between the Detroit Tigers and the Cleveland Guardians. Now, we're going to see Drew Hutchinson and Aaron Savali as the projected starters for Game 1. No official starter for the Guardians quite yet in Game 2. Brian Garcia going for Detroit. Now, obviously, these are subject to change. That's why going over doubleheaders is a little bit difficult here on the rundown. But to me, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go with the Guardians here on the money line and lay a little bit on the run line as well in each of these games. The Tigers have struggled on the road. They're 17 and 40 now. They just got swept on the road by the White Sox. They lost the uh, all three of those games on the run line as well. And uh, the, the Cleveland Guardians, they took it to the Toronto Blue Jays. They took two of three in Toronto. They held the Blue Jays to two runs or less in each of those games. And, you know, the pitching staff is doing well. The bullpen has been really strong. And the lineup is getting at right-handed pitching very, very well. And you're going to be facing two righties here in Hutchinson and Garcia, two guys that I do think are going to regress quite a bit as the season continues. The Guardians already got to Hutchinson in that first start. Uh, they faced him a couple days ago, actually. Eight base hits, three earned runs, a walk, and only three strikeouts and five innings pitch. So I think the Guardians can get to Hutchinson here. I think Savali is good enough here for Cleveland to cover the run line in game one. And I think against Brian Garcia, who hasn't had a lot of uh, opportunities as a starting pitcher quite yet this year, he does have issues with the walks, doesn't really strike out a lot of batters. I think that's worrisome for uh, Detroit in this spot as well. So I think the Guardians are the far better team, especially at home. I'm going to take them on the run line in Game 1 and Game 2. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Noah Syndergaard and Mike Biner are your projected starters. We saw a high-scoring affair at Great American Ballpark on Sunday afternoon. 13 total runs scored. I don't know if we're going to get to 13, but I do like the over in this spot, and I also do like the Phillies to win this game overall. Noah Syndergaard, not the dominant starter that we saw with the New York Mets a few seasons ago. He has changed a little bit since his big injury, but you know, he's still a decent starting pitcher. I still think he'll be good enough for the Phillies to get the win, and in his first two starts as a Philly, the Phillies have won both of those games. But in his last 11 innings, 17 base hits, 6 earned runs against the Nationals and Marlins. We know those are two of the weaker lineups in baseball. So that is a bit concerning when you're going into a hitter-friendly ballpark. The Reds offense put up eight runs on Sunday. I don't think they'll get that on Monday afternoon, but I, th I think they could score three, four, five runs here, and the Phillies can do the rest of the damage to get us over this total against Mike Miner, who has consistently struggled in 2022. The left-hander, the Phillies have hitting lefties very well this year, and Mike Miner one and six with an ERA of, or one and nine, excuse me, with an ERA above six, uh, giving up home runs galore. At least one home run in each of his last four starts. A lot of walks as well. At least three walks in each of his last five starts. I think the Phillies can score a few runs on him early and get to one of the worst bullpens in baseball in the Reds as well. So give me the over and the Phillies in this one. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Miami Marlins. 6.40 Eastern start time, Joe Musgrove and Sandy Alcantara. A great pitching matchup we see here. Two pitchers with sub-3 ERAs into mid-August. We see Musgrove 8-5 with a 2.91 ERA. Alcantara 10-5 with a 2.01 ERA. Now, Alcantara did struggle quite a bit in his last outing. We're not used to seeing that from him. He's been very sharp all season, basically. But last start, seven and two-thirds innings, so he pitched deep into the game still, but gave up eight hits and four earned runs. Only had four strikeouts and one walk allowed. Still no home runs in that start, and he really hasn't given up a lot of homers at all this year. But the Padres did get to Sandy Alcantara earlier in the year, and now they add in reinforcements in Juan Soto and Josh Bell. I do think the Padres will win this game in the end. And you look at Joe Musgrove, has he been his sharpest recently? No, that's definitely not the case. He's struggled in certain spots. Last time out was a really good outing for him, a bounce back start against the Giants, seven innings, one earned run. Only four strikeouts. I'd like to see that number rise, but the Marlins just aren't scoring runs. That's been the case for quite some time, and that's why the total set for this one is six and a half. The Padres, very strong lineup, but the total still six and a half because the Marlins can't score runs, and, and the, both of these pitchers have been solid. But you look at the series against Atlanta. One run scored in the final game on Sunday, two runs on Saturday and uh, in game two, two runs on Saturday's game one, and then three runs, the most they scored in that series, another loss on Friday. They're just not scoring a lot of runs. In fact, the last time that they scored more than three runs, 
Uh, you have to go back quite a bit. It was the first game in that Mets series. Uh, they still lost the game 6-4, to four, and that was in Miami uh, quite a while ago, uh, back on July 29th. So the Marlins just aren't scoring enough for me to take them in this spot. Give me the San Diego Padres here on the money line. In our next game, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Washington Nationals. Marcus Stroman and Josiah Gray are your starters. These two teams just played each other at Wrigley Field last week, so both of these starters did, did just face the opposition in their most recent outing. And Marcus Stroman struggled a bit. Five innings, four earned runs, two home runs in that one. He did have six strikeouts, which is nice to see. Josiah Gray, though, actually pitched pretty well. Six and a third innings, only two earned runs allowed. However, the Cubs are still pretty sizable favorites here at minus 140. I think part of that is because this is going to be a night game, and it's going to be at home. And those are two bad things for Josiah Gray this year. He struggled mightily in night games. And at home this year, he owns a 2-7 and seven record with a 6.75 ERA. And opposed to where he's looking on the road, he's 5-1 and one with a 3.21 ERA. So he pitched well at Wrigley Field, but coming back home here, I don't think it's going to be a good spot for him. I do think Marcus Stroman is the better starter. The Cubs and Nationals, pretty weak bullpens, both of them. I do uh, trust the Cubs lineup just a little bit more than Washington's right now. So I'm going to take the Chicago Cubs here on the money line on the road. In our next game, we see a big-time AL East rivalry between the Tampa Bay Rays and the New York Yankees. No official starter for Tampa Bay quite yet, so no official lineup, but Garrett Cole is projected to go for New York. Now, in recent years, Cole has struggled against this Rays lineup, but that has not been the case in 2022. He's faced Tampa Bay now 19 and one-thirds innings, a .93 ERA, an opponent's batting average of 123, 29 strikeouts in those innings, no home runs allowed. He has been almost untouchable against the Rays this year in three starts against them, and I like him in this spot as well. The Rays still not 100% with their lineup, some injuries still dealing with. And you look at their numbers in the last 30 days against right-handed pitching, they are 20th in Team OPS, strikeout rate, one of the highest in the league in the top 10 right now. Isolated power numbers, uh, you know, not much better, right? 20th as well. So I think the, I think Cole pitch as well. I think the Yankees can get to the Rays bullpen, which hasn't been as strong in 2022 as it has in recent years. I think the Yankees win this game. I'm going to take them on the run line here as I expect the price to be pretty steep with Cole on the mound. If it's not too bad, I'll take the money line as well, but I'll lay the one and a half runs right now with New York. Next up, we see another AL East matchup between the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. Kyle Bradish and Yusei Kikuchi are your starters. And normally when I see a, a lineup facing the same pitcher two times or three times in a really short time period, I do give the advantage to the lineup. But in this game, I actually do like the under. This is going to be a tough spot for both of these teams. When you look at the Blue Jays, they struggled offensively against the Guardians in that series at home. They got shut out in the first game, 8 to nothing. They were able to win the second game, but they only scored two runs. And then in game three, they lost 7-2. to two. So really, the offense wasn't there. Two or less runs in all three of those games. And Kyle Bradish is somebody that I do think will improve as the season continues. He wasn't too bad against the Blue Jays last start. Five and a third, three earned runs, four strikeouts. The Orioles will take that, and that was good enough for the Orioles to win that game. In fact, the last three starts that Bradish has had, the Orioles have won those all three of those games against the Reds, Rangers, and Blue Jays. Bradish has an ex-fit below four right now, so I do think there's improvements in this game. I think he's been a little bit unlucky this year. On the other side, you say Kikuchi, not my favorite starter to back, but at least at home, he's had pretty decent numbers on the road. Really not backable, a 6.19 ERA, but at home, a 4-2 and record with a 4.22 ERA, 52 strikeouts in 42 and two-thirds innings, a 205 opponent's batting average. And we know the Orioles definitely hit righties better than lefties this year, so I think Kikuchi can have a decent out of here. The total for this one is set pretty high because of these pitchers' ERAs and their reputations, but I think there's a little bit of value on the under because of that. And another tough travel spot for Baltimore is they're going to be going from Tampa Bay to Toronto. Maybe some sluggish bats at the dish in the early innings of this one. Give me the under in the Orioles-Blue Jays. Next up, we see the New York Mets taking on the Atlanta Braves. We're going to see Carlos Carrasco and Spencer Strider on the mound for this one. Spencer Strider's got something to prove in this game. He made some comments after his last start against these Mets where he struggled to give up two, uh, four earned runs and two and two-thirds innings. He did have five strikeouts and didn't give up a home run, but after that game, he mentioned that the Mets were getting a lot of luck. They had some weird hits as well, and you know, I, don't, I do think there is some truth in what he was saying as the Mets do lead the league right now overall this season in BABIP, a 309 BABIP against right-handed pitching, I should mention, uh, just against righties. But, you know, BABIP, for those of you who don't know, is batting average for balls put into play, and a uh, league average is about 300. So I would say the Mets are a little bit unsustainably high with their BABIP. Uh, Spencer Strider has been pitching very well overall this year, 3.11 ERA this season, 138 strikeouts in 89 and two-thirds innings. And like I mentioned, he has a lot to prove in this game. 
but I do think he's going to get a win in this one. I like the Atlanta Braves here on the money line. When you look at Carlos Carrasco, he was pitching pretty well against the Braves in the beginning of his last start against them, but then struggled towards the end of that outing. And now he's on the road where he has struggled the most this year with a 4.41 ERA on the road rather than his 3.35 ERA at City Field with that 8-1 and record at home this season. Opponents batting average at 272 on the road this year. Some more home runs allowed, less strikeouts. So I do think that the Braves can get to uh, Carlos Carrasco early on here. Uh, Spencer Strider, you know, the Mets are going to want to get to him too, but I think he's good enough for a win in this spot. I'm going to take the Atlanta Braves here on the money line. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Minnesota Twins. Chris Bubich and Joe Ryan are your projected starters. I will say Chris Bubich still has an ERA above 5 at 5.02, but he has been pitching a lot better in the last month or so than he was at the beginning of the year. And the Royals have won three of his last four starts, and he's faced some tough lineups. All five of his games of his last five starts have been against teams with above 500 records. The Blue Jays, the Rays, the Yankees, the Red Sox, and the White Sox. So, you know, facing the Twins here, I think the Twins will score a few runs on him, but I think Joe Ryan's going to deal on this spot. He's faced the uh, Royals a couple times this year, and he's pitched really well against them. And he's also pitched very, very well at home this year. I worry about him on the road. He's got an ERA above five on the road, but a 4-2 record at 2.92 ERA at home this season. Opponent's batting average of just 184 at home as well. And he's faced, like I mentioned, he's faced the, the Royals a couple times on the year. A .77 ERA in 11 and two-thirds innings. 11 strikeouts, no home runs allowed. I think he pitches well. I think Bubich does a good enough job here to keep this game lower scoring. Uh, Twins going to be traveling from Los Angeles to Minnesota, so a tough travel spot there. Maybe, again, some sluggish bats. But this total set just a little bit too high because of Bubich's struggles and his ERA. I like the under in this spot, and I lean towards the Twins as well. Next up, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Texas Rangers. Glenn Otto and James Caprillion are your projected starters. Glenn Otto has struggled in 2022, a 5.2 ERA, a 1.42 whip, giving up a lot of home runs, at least one homer in each of his last five starts. A lot of walks allowed as well, including four in his most recent outing. And the Oakland A's got to him back on July 12th in four and one-third innings. He got six hits, four earned runs, a walk as well, and only three strikeouts in that one. And that was a 14-7 Athletics win. And the score line is a little misleading as that was an extra innings. That was the game where the A's just poured it on in the, in the 12th inning. So Otto didn't earn the loss in that game, but he certainly didn't pitch very well. And James Caprillion has improved his game quite a bit from the beginning of the year. I have to give it to him. He, is, he gets about five to six innings per start recently, about three earned runs or less in most of those outings, and including a couple of starts against these Rangers where the A's won both of those games, and that was one of, one of those starts was that 14-7 to seven win for the A's. But I think Caprillion's good enough here, and we're getting one and a half runs at a pretty good price on the run line. I'd sprinkle a little bit on the money line as well. I think Oakland competes in this spot. Give me the A's on the run line, plus one and a half. Next up, we see the Houston Astros taking on the Chicago White Sox on national TV, Fox Sports 1. Jose Urquidy and Johnny Cueto are your starters. I think we're going to see some scoring early and often in this game. The Astros' uh, bats have been red hot, scoring at least six runs in each of their last four games. And Jose Urquidy has struggled on the road this year. A 6-2 record, but a 4.83 ERA, 11 home runs in 59 and two-thirds innings. He's pitched exactly 59.2 at home and on the road this year, so pretty good sample size. The strikeout numbers, 58 at home, 36 on the road. So the strikeout numbers way down, the opponent's batting average way up at 271 compared to 217 at home. So I think the White Sox bats are heating up a little bit, even though they have some injuries to guys like Tim Anderson and Luis Robert. They're still scoring some runs, and that was against the Detroit Tigers, but I still think they'll be able to get the Jose Urquidy in this spot. Like I mentioned, the Astros bats have been red hot, and you know Johnny Cueto's good to give up a few runs each and every outing, it seems. Gives up a lot of base hits, and I do worry about him in this spot against the Astros. We've already faced him once this year. They didn't do too much in that first outing, but I think they get to Cueto in this spot for a few runs. I like the first five over in this Astros-White Sox game. Next up, we see the L.A. Dodgers taking on the Milwaukee Brewers with Julio Urias and Freddy Peralta as the starters. Now, it's really tough to back the Brewers when they're facing a lefty, especially against this Dodgers team, the team to beat in the National League. I know the Dodgers disappointed on Sunday against Kansas City, but the Brewers have just really struggled against lefties. 27th in the last 30 days in Team OPS against lefties with a 593 Team OPS. Isolated power, much worse, ranked 29th in the league, only better than the Chicago White Sox. Pretty surprising as the White Sox are known to be hitting lefties, but not so much in the last month. You look at the strikeout rate, a 30.5% strikeout rate as a team against lefties. That's second highest only to the Tampa Bay Rays. 
I just can't back the Brewers in this spot. And Freddie Peralta hasn't been pitching too deep in the games. His strikeout numbers are still there for the most part, but only seven and eight and two thirds innings. Uh, his last two starts a little concerning against some weaker teams that strike out a ton in the Pirates and Rays. We know the Dodgers don't strike out much against right-handed pitching. I think they can get to Peralta here for a few runs. I'm going to take the Los Angeles Dodgers here on the money line. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels hosting the Seattle Mariners. Luis Castillo and Shohei Otani are your projected starters. Now, sometimes when I look at a money line price, it does confuse me a little bit. And this is one of those games. I know that the Mariners haven't been the strongest as of late. They lost a game, uh, back-to-back games in that series against the Rangers on the weekend. And you know, the Angels do lead the season series seven games to five. And I know the, the uh, Shohei Otani has been pitching very well this year, one of the better starters in the American League. But Luis Castillo has also been sharp this year, 2.71 ERA, pitching really well with his new club. And the Mariners have had the much better bullpen and the much better lineup this year. So for Los Angeles to be minus 150, minus 155, I'm seeing in some spots, it just it does make me scratch my head a little bit. Maybe the books are trying to tell us something. I'm not sure. I'm going to be a little hesitant with this game because of that price. But I'm going to take the plus money with Seattle. To me, they've just been the better team. And Shohei Otani has been great, like I mentioned. But... He hasn't been able to win a lot of games for the Angels this year. It's a team effort, and even with him pitching pretty well, the Angels have still earned a pretty bad losing record in the last two-plus months or so. I think the Mariners, you know, they're coming off a disappointing weekend, like I mentioned. I think they can get back here and earn an important road victory with their best starter on the mound. In our final game of the night, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the San Francisco Giants. Madison Bumgarner and Alex Cobb are your projected starters. Now, I know the Diamondbacks have done a pretty good job against the Giants. As of late, they did sweep the series back in Arizona the last time they faced each other, and they do lead the season series 6-3. to three. But I do think this is a good spot for Alex Cobb and the Giants to earn a pretty convincing win. I'm going to lay the run line here with San Francisco. The Giants are hitting left-handed pitching very well this year, and that includes the last 30 days. When you look at their numbers against lefties in the last month, they're top 15 in Team OPS, top 10 in isolated power against Southpaws. And Madison Bumgarner's given up at least four earned runs in four of his last five starts, walking a lot of batters, giving up some home runs as well. We're not used to seeing that from Bumgarner, more of a ground ball pitcher, but at least one homer in three of his last four. So I like the Giants to get to him. And on the other side, Alex Cobb, he is pitching a lot better than his start to the year. He had an injury at the beginning of the year as well. But uh, last start against the Padres, five innings, three earned runs, seven strikeouts. The Giants will take that, especially in a game like this against the Diamondbacks. Not the strongest lineup on paper. Give me San Francisco here, minus the one and a half at home. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday, August 15th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.